I uh, spoke at this meeting about uh, HPV or human papilloma virus related throat cancer. Um, it is uh, growing in epidemic proportions with about 90% of patients presenting to our clinic nowadays uh, with throat cancer have it uh, due to uh, or at least partially caused by human papilloma virus. The three uh, ways that can be treated are surgery uh, and chemotherapy and radiation. Um, you know, uh, at the beginning of my career, we operated upon all of those uh, patients. Um, and then we entered an era where we uh, presently or recently did a lot of chemo and radiation, chemo and or radiation. And now the pendulum is swinging a little bit back towards uh, primary surgery given the advent of transoral techniques, um, either using the laser, transoral laser microsurgery, or the robot. We call that transoral, or, transoral robotic surgery, or TORS. Um, and that's probably uh, in part related to the HPV epidemic in that those uh, tumors in the base of tongue and tonsil tend to be more superficial uh, and easier to resect with transoral approaches, which is through the mouth. Um, and patients uh, in general with HPV-related throat cancer have better survival rates than the cancers caused by tobacco and alcohol that are HPV negative. The primaries can be earlier. Um, the patients do tend to have uh, uh, more nodal disease. The patients are more youthful. And we don't actually know why patients' uh, outcome is better, but we know that in every uh, study done to date, uh, there's a significantly improved survival in patients with uh, HPV-related throat cancer as compared to those uh, that are HPV negative. And it's, it's like 20% or greater difference in outcome. Yes, uh, HPV vaccination is uh, uh, available and approved for children between the ages of 9 and 26, both boys and girls. The vaccination rates are low. Uh, they're about 40% uh, at best. Um, and there's a long, long window between the time of vaccination and uh, when you would actually uh, con contract cervical cancer or throat cancer or genital warts. And I think the vaccine is likely to pre prevent all of that. Um, uh, so the, the challenge is, is that um, we've witnessed a 250% increase in HPV-related throat cancer in uh, 10 years. And we have um, 30 years before the vaccination rates will have uh, an outcome because there's a 30-year delay between when you get the vaccine and most people get, get throat cancer. And so we have to figure out how to uh, treat throat cancer effectively, uh, cost-effectively, with minimal functional uh, morbidity from treatment for the next 30 or 40 years. The biology of throat cancer is changing. Um, it's growing in epidemic proportions in most uh, developed countries in the world. And um, uh, if you develop a lump in your neck um, or a sore throat that doesn't go away, see a head and neck cancer surgeon. Uh, this does strike people even in their 20s and 30s and 40s. Um, I would advocate for vaccinating um, uh, eligible patients for HPV. Uh, it's one of the few vaccines on earth that actually prevents cancer. Um, I would add that um, most, most people know about cervical cancer, very few know about throat cancer, and throat cancer due to HPV is more common in the USA today 
than cervical cancer. So uh, the next 30 years we're going to be um, fighting the throat cancer epidemic because uh, we've uh, made significant inroads on the cervical cancer uh, issue. Thank <music> you.